If you're looking at purchasing a vehicle and you want to know if that vehicle is stolen or has any active theft records, there's only one certain 100% verifiable way to check that VIN to make sure it's not stolen. And no, it's not using one of these online VIN check websites that you'll find that'll charge you 20 or $30 to check the VIN number. Those are notoriously inaccurate. You don't want to use those. The only verifiable way to run a VIN is using a VIN verification or VIN inspection form executed by an authorized agent. We're going to go through a couple examples of these forms. You see them on the screen and we'll go through each one of them uh, to show you how to use this form to get a VIN checked for stolen or other nefarious backgrounds. Because if you're going to purchase a vehicle or even if you already have purchased a vehicle and you want to start doing title paperwork because at some point you're going to need to get a title for your vehicle. You want to make sure that there's no stolen background. So let me tell you what you can't do. Obviously, the online searches are not going to be accurate. They're just a website that claims to check for stolen. They don't have access to the stolen databases. Nobody does that's not an official. You also can't call your local police department. They're not going to do it over the phone. And here's the reason why. They don't want a car thief to call them up and say, hey, is this VIN number stolen? Yes, it is. And then they hang up and then they know to run away from the car. The only way to do it is to use one of these VIN inspection forms to have a local law enforcement agency check the VIN. Now, you can call them up to arrange this, but they're going to have to put their eyes on the car. By policy, every law enforcement agency in the country requires that they put eyes on the VIN number that they're checking. And there's a few reasons for that. First of all, if you read them a VIN number over the phone, a B, a D, a C kind of sound the same on the phone. So they want to make sure it's the right letters. Number two, like we said, they want to put their eyes on the VIN number and on the vehicle to know where it is. So if it is stolen, they have it right in front of them. How embarrassing would it be for a police officer to run a VIN number, it comes back stolen, and then his boss says, where's that car that you just checked out? Uh, I don't know. That's not going to look very good. That's why they're not going to do it over the phone. Even if you go in person to the police department with the VIN number written on a piece of paper, they're not going to do that because a one... An I and a lowercase l all look the same, so some people might write it the wrong way. In addition, it's better for you to have this done in person, and here's why. When you're done with this process, you're going to have this form officially signed so that you have proof that the vehicle was checked and it's not stolen. What happens if you do it electronically or over the phone or just somebody tells you and they say, no, it's not stolen, don't worry about it. And then you're driving it later and it turns out to be stolen. You can't say, well, Joe Schmo told me it's not stolen. They're not going to care. you got nothing in writing. So you want to have this form. And you're going to need it in some cases to apply for a title. So let's look at the simplest one. This is from the state of Vermont. This is a verification of VIN or HIN, which is hull identification number for a vessel, for a boat. And this part is completed by the applicant. It's underlined, applicant your name first and last your address your email address phone number make model year of the vehicle most important thing is the vin number you notice is not on here they don't want you writing the vin number on this form okay section two completed by authorized personnel only please write legibly or will not be accepted so they're even admonishing the law enforcement agent to write legibly. VIN must be entered by the verifying official. Cannot be entered by anybody else. Now, who is a verifying official? Who's authorized to do this? In Vermont, in almost every state, here's the definition. It has to be a sworn agent. What does sworn agent mean? Law enforcement agent that is sworn to duty. They've been through post which is kind of like boot camp for police officers. Typically, the way you can identify somebody who's a sworn agent is they have a badge and a gun. Sometimes not a gun, but they'll have a badge. What that means is the clerk at the DMV office can't do it. 
the receptionist at the police department can't do it. The court, the court receptionist can't do it. it. Has to be a sworn law enforcement agent. It can be, um, it can be a local police officer. It can be a sheriff, deputy, state patrol. It can be a game warden. It can be um, a jail officer, a corrections facility officer. There are some inspectors at the Department of Motor Vehicles that are sworn agents, badge and a gun. So those are the people who can do this. And it will define that on the form. So they have to write the VIN number, uh, what state that they find a hit for, what date they did this, where they did it, and odometer. VIN run through NCIC. NCIC is National Crime Information Computer. That's where you check for stolen. Vehicles listed as stolen. Do you have to check the box? No. I attest that I have been certified to visually verify the VIN number. I've run the VIN through NCIC to confirm the vehicle is not stolen. I certify the statements herein are true. The declarations are made under penalties of VSA. That's basically saying it's, it's uh, sworn to be true. You can't alter or tamper this form. They have to put their name, their agency and their badge number and that form is done let's take a look at another state let's take a look at California verification of vehicle not to be completed by applicant what that means is you can't fill this out the agency has to do it they're asking a few more questions are there any license plates on the vehicle if there is what's the number the VIN number here you notice they're putting it in separate boxes right they're putting it in one digit in each box also, what category? Is it an automobile? Is it commercial? Is it a um, mobile home? Is it a motorcycle? Is it an ATV? Uh, if there's a separate engine number, some vehicles have a chassis number and engine number. They want that here. Make, model, weight, if known. And then what's the VIN location? Where did you find the VIN number? Is it visible through windshield on the cowl? Is it on the body? Is it on the door frame? And here's why. Every vehicle is supposed to have a VIN number in a certain place. And if it's in the wrong place, that's going to be a red flag. So in addition to the checking for stolen, they're making sure that no one's switching VINs around. How is it attached? This is very important. You can't tell how it's attached. Rosette rivets, meaning rivets with little points on them. Round rivets, adhesive, screws, or stamped. Again, a VIN number is a very important and serious identifier of that vehicle. And the reason they want to know how it's attached and also what type it is, is it a metal plate, is it stamped on body, is it just a sticker label? Because they don't want somebody cutting a VIN number off of one vehicle and then taping it onto another one or putting it on with sheet metal screws. They want to know that this is a legitimate VIN number in the appropriate place on that vehicle attached in the appropriate manner. If it's not, it's going to be a red flag. Um... VIN number appears okay, altered, tampered, illegible, missing, cannot locate, assigned by FO, so assigned by um, a foreign officer. Is the model year determined by the 10th digit of the VIN? Every VIN number after 1981 had in the 10th digit a letter that corresponds to a table for the year. So that's how you could tell the year. Uh, did it come from... NIC book, National Insurance Crime Bureau book, or some other way. How, basically, they want to know how did you tell what year it was. Federal certification label, does it match the VIN? So when you look at other stickers on the vehicle, such as emission stickers, weight stickers, does the VIN match? Or is it pre-1970? What does that tell you? Before 1970, they did not have this federal certification label. FMVSS, you've heard us talk about that in our import document video. Um, that's the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards, meaning that this car was built with the right bumper height, lights, horn, that kind of thing. If it was imported, you need to know. Supporting ownership document. This is if the vehicle has other documentation going along with it. So that's California. Let's take a look at Oregon. Oregon is called a uh, VIN inspection form. Form must be fully completed and signed. Instructions on back. We'll look at those. Name, address, 
plate number. VIN, again, they have it in separate boxes for each character. You notice the 10th character, that's your year, like we talked about. What is the VIN location? Same thing. Is it through the windshield? Is it on the body? Is it on the engine? Is it in the trunk? VIN type. How is it attached? Remember, we've seen this before. Rosette rivets, round rivets, screws, adhesive. What's the condition? Fed standards agrees with VIN. This all sounds familiar. This is a whole separate state doing it the same way as the last one we looked at. So this is going to be pretty standard because checking for stolen is not just as simple as, yeah, just pull it up on Google to see if it's stolen. They're going through a very serious process. And they certify, I have physically inspected the vehicle described. Remember what we said. They don't do it over the phone. They don't do it if you show up at the headquarters or the barracks or precinct with the VIN number on a piece of paper. They want to see this vehicle. So they physically inspected it to verify the VIN. And I certify by checking that I am an Oregon licensed dealer. So a dealer can do this. If it's in stock, they can't do it for somebody else. If not, it's law enforcement. And then shade of the area for DMV only. It tells you what the instructions are. Again, these are going to be the common areas. Where is the VIN located? What is it on? Metal plate, stamped on body. How is it attached? Rivets, screws, adhesive, and what condition it's in. This is the reason why you want to go through this process. Because it will save you from ever having any questions about your vehicle in the future. You can prove that at the time you had the vehicle, the VIN number was you know, a metal plate attached with rivets, appears okay. So there's never any question later that your vehicle has any um, vulnerability or suspicion. And you'll save a copy of this form. You want to have your VIN verified. In most cases, you're going to need to. If you are purchasing a vehicle without a title, which we do not recommend, or if you've already purchased a vehicle, this is one of the first things you want to do. You want to check for stolen and have that VIN number verified. It's more than just checking for stolen, it's making sure that your VIN number is legitimate, it's not altered, it's not from a different vehicle, and the type of person who will inspect the vehicle, they will know what else to look for. They'll know if that metal plate um, appears altered. They'll know maybe if somebody scraped it off another vehicle and put it on yours. 99% of the time, that's not the case, but you want to know now before you get too far into it, and that's what this process is for especially if you've purchased a vehicle without a title. Look, if you buy a vehicle and you have a legal title and that VIN number on the title matches your car, you're going to be probably fine. But in cases where you need to have a vehicle identification number verified or, as they say in some states, inspected, you want to make sure that you jump through all the hoops, even if it is inconvenient. That will save you a lot of headache later. It will give you the proof that you need and the peace of mind you need to know your vehicle doesn't have any stolen hits. Now, what about liens? What about salvage? Most states, they're also going to check for liens and salvage. There's no guarantee, especially for liens. Salvage, they'll probably check. But if the vehicle is not coming from the state where you're doing it, for example, this is California. If you're having this verification of vehicle done in California, but that vehicle came from, let's say, Oklahoma, if there's a lien in Oklahoma, you may not know from this VIN inspection. There's other ways to check for the liens, and we'll talk about that in other videos. This is mostly for stolen and for salvage, which you do want to know those because that will hold you up in getting a title. Check out our future episodes about liens and lien holders, import and export, and if you have more questions, you can reach our website at cartitles.com.